the cock 45 here on a snowy day and you know from the title it's a 1911 day we're going to throw some big bullets into the snow today maybe even into some steel and other things we've got the sig scorpion 1911 how's that for a cool gun what should we shoot first uh, john i told you to wash off the snow you use dishwashing detergent oh yeah i can't believe it <laughs> man uh, I guess it worked. Oh, speaking of snow, there's some ice. And there's another piece of ice. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's, uh, let's wear this thing out. 1911, single stack. Pretty neat. Yeah, low capacity. That's okay. Big capacity on the weight, 230 grains. <laughs> that rattles the ammo cans or the uh, propane tanks. Let's shoot one more mag here. Oh, sorry about that. Okay, hit them. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool gun, I tell you. Let's take a look at it because it is uh, an interesting looking firearm and uh, it's grown on me in terms of its looks. I tend to prefer a good old blued steel or stainless. This one, and this is steel of course, but it's uh, Cerakoted. And a desert tan or flat dark earth, I, I, I'm not even sure what it's called on this particular one. But it's, uh, it's, it's a little darker than desert tan to me. But it's a nice gun, they call it the Scorpion. We'll see what we can sting with it today. And uh, you notice that magwell, it's an interesting grip. I've never had one of those on a firearm. The uh, uh, Hogue makes those. It's a kind of a one piece, uh, their G3 magwell grip configuration. You get with that, that uh, flat mainspring housing and the grips, nice texture to them. I, I like them just fine. And then of course the magwell for our speed reloading, right? Because we all want to be able to speed reload our 1911s. Notice the checkering. I think it's 25 lines per inch there on the front of the back strap. That's pretty cool. Comes with it. These are, they run about 1200, I think, uh, MSRP. Got some big rails on it and a flat trigger. Okay, uh, it's mainly designed for people with flat fingers because that's, that's just the design of the trigger. But you might be able to shoot it okay, even if your finger isn't flat. You think? That was a joke. Actually, the flat trigger makes them more accurate. Seriously. You can hit anything if you got a flat trigger. Actually, uh, that might look a little odd to some of you. Let me load these, these, these magazines. Uh, it, uh, I like a flat trigger like that. If you've ever tried one of those, speaking of that, uh, for a while so if I can't hit anything today you'll know why uh, yeah I'm a bad shot right <laughs> I can't blame it on the gun I'll save that up front any misses are all mine which is usually the case isn't it no matter who's shooting because this thing has a, about a five pound trigger it said and it has a nice clean break it feels good to me it's uh, why am I reloading these I, I thought I might not even shoot all these but uh, it's okay now that's in the fire. I've got to shoot these magazines. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Good old 45 hardball. Okay, I mean, we've got a mixture of uh, some uh, Wilson mags, some Ed Brown mags, and some Brown Ells mags here. And uh, I want to get out the mags I've just never had any trouble with. Uh, maybe, maybe a Wilson occasionally, uh, but you know, some of the older ones, I guess. But uh, generally, these are some of my best magazines that I, I know work. And, and I think the springs are all okay on all these. They're not weakened. But this is a pretty cool gun. You got your rail. You got your uh, low profile Novak uh, sights or Novak style uh, sights, night sights, sig lights, whatever they call them there. And your beaver tail. You got all that stuff that, that people tend to like on a 1911 that you, you see on a lot of 1911s, don't you? Uh, for various prices. And this jumps them all up. Uh, I think just about whoever makes it up into the thousand to fifteen hundred dollar range. Of course, once you get your nice beaver tails and rails and especially night sights and which are adjustable, you know, for you know, loosen the screw there. So you've got adjustable sights. Uh, pretty cool gun. Let's take a couple of shots with it. Uh, 
I don't you know it's interesting how many firearms now have a color to them now like that different some kind of coating and Cerakote's of course one of the I guess the best more famous ones are well known but there are several I think that do that uh, so yeah I'm, I'm getting used to it a little bit I still prefer I think plain old stainless or just plain old steel uh, steel finish blue finish I know they're all steel for the most part yeah this thing feels good I have to say does it feel good to you Mr. Cowboy Yeah, they all do that. Good looking gun. Uh, it really is. Let's go across the hill there. Let's just, uh, I don't know if I can hit anything, even though the sights are on. Let's try for a piggy over there. Try in one hand. Why am I doing this? I don't know. Let's see. There we go. He's frozen. Yeah, he's really frozen. Where's my 4570? We've not been over there since the ice storm and snow, so a lot of those things are probably uh, frozen to the ground. Since I'm shooting from concealment here, let's put him back into my high dollar holster there. Okay, like I said, it fits in that pretty, pretty well with uh, the rail and everything. And uh, let's, uh, I don't really want to drop my mags in the snow, I guess. Uh, we won't get too fancy here, but there's a, it is a target-rich environment, and I have a 1911 at my disposal, so I want to have a little fun with it. <laughs> Feels pretty good. Yeah, sirree. I love that trigger. Oh, there's some two liters that have not been engaged yet. Uh, let's move up on here. Take them out. Uh, coffin. Okay. I'm trying just to keep them there in the, uh, in the middle of it. The sights seem to be right on. Uh, they really do. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to. I'll shoot that that round uh, black one there. I'm gonna hold right in the middle. I believe the sights pretty much put it right where you have them when you pull the trigger provided you don't flinch <laughs> oh man nice and of course that's always the trick not flinching let me try that ram i'm gonna see if i can pop one on his horn or up high enough to maybe break him loose Didn't work. Try a couple more on him. Oh, empty mag. Got some over here. You really uh, shouldn't, if you're in combat, I, uh, I stuck an empty mag back in my mag pouch. You, you probably don't want to do that in combat. That, by the way, that's an old Bianchi mag pouch. I, uh, I bought a couple of those back in. Oh, it's probably about 87, I guess, when I first started uh, playing the IPSC game a little bit. Still work. Because I shot 1911s most of the time, and uh, they still fit my hand like a glove. And uh, I have to say, this one feels good. I've never, I don't think, have uh, fired a SIG 1911. I've heard uh, good things about them for years. Uh, people tend to compliment them; they really do. And again, being kind of old school, it, it's still hard for me to. to to grasp, you know, SIG making 1911s, really? And even when Smith & Wesson started doing it, and a lot of the companies, just like AR-15s, you know, uh, you know, so many people are making them. It's just, uh, just uh, it's kind of a mental leap for me to accept that. And, you know, I not bought any from companies other than Colt, you know, <laughs> Springfield, some of those. Uh, have I? Well, Ed Brown, you know, custom guns. But uh, I like this gun. Uh, and 
I, I do. I'll tell you one thing I like about it. It, uh, it doesn't have a couple things I like about it myself personally. And they, they have a good reputation. Uh, is that, uh, and of course it's good and clear, feels, feels good, precision. You know, some of these, uh, these guns are just hard to break down. This has your standard. Of course, the 1911 is not like breaking down a Glock. We'll know that. But uh, from the first time I took it apart, after firing it, I was I was pleased that you know it just comes apart easily. You don't have the full length guide rod. You don't have a uh, barrel bushing that's so tight. You have to get out a pipe wrench to get it out and everything. And uh, it's got the firing pin block there. But the machining and everything is what you'd expect from from Sig, right? And uh, it's got a match great barrel, of course. So uh, that always makes a huge difference, right? Standing and shooting. And uh, it just seems to be well made. Imagine that. SIG making something properly. Uh, you might have a different experience, but uh, it's, uh, I, just, I just like it. Uh, if I were looking at uh, 1911s, I didn't have a, a, a nice one, let's say. And I was looking to get something in, in this price range, just a good 1911 with the beaver tail, the things that we, we like to have on them, you know, to make them uh, more shootable maybe. Uh, this this would definitely be uh, something I would look at because it, it, it's, it's a nice gun, feels good. All right, goes back together like a 1911 off to. No big problems getting it apart. I think, in fact, it's easier to get apart and back together than my uh, Colt, I can say that. So they didn't do anything strange, at least on this model. Okay, it's a uh, it's a good feeling gun. Grips feel great. The checkering is there. So you know, I don't know. So, I can see why people like the Sigs. I have to say, we got a couple more loaded here. Let's take a few more shots. Boy, it feels good to get out here, even though there's snow on the ground. If you hadn't noticed, and it's cold, uh, it's just really neat to get back out on the range. And be shooting now i have shot i've actually shot this firearm but it's just walking out here and taking some shots from time to time cleaning it come back shoot a couple more mags just like to try it out and everything as i do with all of them and uh but it's, it's just neat to get out here and really uh send some lead down range i know a lot of you are getting cabin fever if you live in this part of the country all right well i'm gonna chance falling i think i've got all the ammo with me that i yeah, that I need. Let's just walk down here and shoot some of these bad guys, see if we can keep them slipping. Uh, yeah. I hate propane tanks, as you can probably tell. Uh, I think one fell on me when I was a kid or something. Nice. Trigger is good. It's got a nice uh, break to it. Am I about to run out of ammo? Just about. Yeah, you feel like you could really uh, machine gun with this thing. Feels oh so good. Oh, I see a couple of uh, 12 ounces there. I wounded him. I can do that at this range. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think those are frozen from uh, days gone by, perhaps. <laughs> oh, and that little red target there needs a hit on it I think yeah from a weak hand a weak handed hit the last shot on that magazine I think I have a couple more maybe yeah buddy 1911s they're fun to shoot and I know there are 1911 haters out there but they are really fun and they're good guns you know what I think I'll try a turkey before we wrap up here that's uh, one uh, up far right <sighs> I know he's frozen but uh 230 grains ought to at least shake him a little bit. If I can hit him. Yeah. Should we try the chicken? I was afraid I was going to run out of ammo and have to creep back up to the shooting table with my tail between my legs. Yeah. <laughs> nice gun. Uh, 
nice gun, a SIG 1911 Scorpion. Uh, some of you probably have this gun, and uh, I like it. And uh, I feel a presence behind me. I really do. And you know what? I am always prepared. Back up, John. All right. <laughs> so let's put this one over here. He's empty and he's down. He's uh, action open. And let's put this one back in the pocket holster. And uh, now that was a uh, HST hollow point I just used right there. So let's put him away in case he's needed again for further activity. All right. I didn't feel extremely safe there in that gun handling. You gotta be careful no matter what's going on. You gotta be ready for anything. You gotta be ready for anything and still try to be safe. Even if your life is in jeopardy like, like mine was right there with somebody sneaking up behind me, okay? Because I was out of ammo. You know, I had no, no loaded magazines anywhere. I got a pocket full of magazines. They're all empty. So, pays to have a pocket gun, have a backup gun, doesn't it? Okay. Anyway, yeah, Sig Scorpion. It's a nice, uh, nice pistol. Uh, I, I really like it. I appreciate uh, the loan of this gun from uh, Tennessee Gun Country. It's, uh, it's a good shooter, good, good trigger. Uh, and I, my guess is they're all the same. Uh, you probably get that same Sig consistency. You know, you get with their striker-fired guns and their their polymer guns. You know, be my guess. But if you have a different story. Uh, share it, of course, because this is my first experience, really, with with a uh, Sig 1911. Okay, for you folks that hate 1911s, I'm sorry for you. You're missing a lot of fun. They're they're great fun to shoot. You don't have to stick it in a holster and pack it around. You can just enjoy shooting it. Really, come on now, lighten up. Life is good.